All right, guys. The next one-on-one with Doc Farhan. Look, I don't care what, uh, you know, sorry to everyone in the Afridi Academy. Andre is my favorite. Okay, that's just how it is. I don't give a fuck. I, I, there, I said it. You know, some people think it's Kyle Oxford because, you know, Kyle's, I'm always like responding to him and like, no, no, no. Kyle's definitely an awesome dude and, and he's, he's up there, but no, no, no one can take the, the, the title from Andre Bettinson. Um, so Andre, I think, so out of everyone, if I, if I, if I look at sort of the person when I see you reply to a comment or a post, I'm like, all right, the dude's taken care of. Like this guy's taken care of now because Andre replied because it, it's, it's like, there are some people in the Academy, some people who've been, you know, uh, kind of following the content for years who know the material, but are afraid to show that they know it, or they're afraid to take a step forward, afraid to lead. But Andre is not afraid. Thank God. And, uh, and, and why should he be? He's shown the results in himself. Um, he's proven it. He has evidence of what, um, you know, how his physiology has changed. His blood test levels will go into all that stuff now. Um, and yeah, dude. So Andre, welcome uh, to one-on-one. And we've had many one-on-ones before, but this is a special one because I don't think I'm going to do any more one-on-ones. Yeah. I think this is it. I told Imran, man, I sent him this mean ass email. I'm like, look, dude, fuck this shit, man. Like, let me just, because right now I'm making a 90 day sequence for the Academy. Okay. So what's ha- what I, what we've noticed, mm. you probably saw my fucking rant uh, yesterday. Yeah. I was angry, dude, because we get these emails and they're like, Oh, you know, they, they bought six months. It's been six months. They get charged for the next six months. And they're like, Oh, can, uh, I want a refund. Oh, because I already have, I have four bags and it's like, so you don't believe it or you just are lazy or like what's happening. You don't care about yourself. Like, why did you pay? Why did you buy this? Like, I don't get it. It's not in my circuitry to get it. I don't just don't get it. Um, so what I've done now is, you know, when someone takes the quiz, you know, the, the YouTube, I don't know if you haven't taken the quiz cause you're not like you already here. But what we do now is people take a quiz, then they go into a funnel, and then I send them 17 videos over 17 days, 17 emails that I wrote from scratch. This is what I've been doing for the last few months. And then eventually they understand the value of Afro D and they purchase, right? Now, once they're in the academy though, some people are lost because there's so much shit. There's resources and challenges and shit that's happening in the academy. We're posting every day. It's all this crazy stuff. So I'm like, okay, it's all good. I'm going to do a 90 day sequence and I'm going to do raw dogging with them every day, a new video every day, a new email every day. And over these 90 days, they will have a habit of what they need to do. They will know exactly what the Academy is because dude, when we started, you know, there was that initial 40 people push, right? You and Van and Venkat and Sumer and all these guys just like handling it, right? Jameson and Michael was there, Nick, all, you know, the, the, the coaching guys, all this 40 people. And now, now we have like 210, I think. And it's like that culture, I want to bring it back that culture of awesomeness of the Academy. So how do I do it with those, that 90 day sequence? Cause I, t- I tell them about the other people and show posts in the emails and show videos about what has happened. So they are in the vibe of that initial Academy experience. And that was so gold, man, that initial, I remember. So yeah, man. So that's sort of, um, uh, to, to give you guys some perspective, uh, when Andre, and, and this really was very touching to me when Andre filled out his orientation and we get every person in the Academy to do this, he wrote that I am, uh, the most influential person in his life. And that was like, man, I was blown away. Like, thank you, man. Thank you for that kindness. It was like, wow. Like, holy shit. Look at this. Response. I wasn't, that wasn't just kindness, man. That's, that's real <laughs> shit. 
Thank you. Thank you. And Andre has even, you know, when I went through my breakup, my last breakup, uh, all these videos that I was crying on and very private stuff, I sent it to Andre. He saw them. Some of them were hours long and he responded to me. So we have this very brotherly bond and, uh, you know, brother from another mother type thing. So welcome, Andre. Uh, Thank you for being here, man. The pleasure is all ours. And there's a lot of value these guys are going to get from you today. Yeah, let's get let's get it going. <laughs> okay, uh, let's let's start with. Um, so we'll talk I mean, about a lot of things. We'll talk about carnivore diet. We'll talk about testosterone and and what what you know your your journey towards doubling testosterone and all that good stuff. Um, we'll go into your modeling, which you're doing next. Uh, we will also go into the physiology, right? What happened in terms of behavior and and actual actions in the world as you. Uh, progress toward, you know, as you went on your journey. So we'll talk about all these things, super, super important, super, very unique material in this one-on-one. So let's get started. Are we going to start it the traditional way with some, you know, I'm ready. (laughs) Okay, let's go. (laughs) Yeah, uh, I think I might be out. Oh, let's see how out I am. Yeah, that's last right here. Last teaspoon, bro. Check it out. Yeah. I'm going to just fuck the spoon. Let's just go. <laughs> I can't believe just the, the people that don't take this every day. And when I, when I realized that there are people that were inconsistent with it, I'm like, wait, well, no shit. You're fucking not seeing results in your blood test. You do your blood test more than you take Afro D for Christ's sake. <laughs> you know, dude, I, I just talked to my dad about this before we had this call. You know, my dad, yeah. dad also takes Afro D and, and I told him like, and, and he also, he's like, he was, he's also a business guy. You know, he, he has clients and he's like, yeah, dude, that's just how people are. <laughs> I'm still going to get angry, but that's just, anyway, you do the, you do the, all righty. The one, two, three, the three, two, one, whatever you want to do. One, two, three. A little bit left. Mm. Make a flag and wave it like this. <laughs> anyway. Mm. Yeah, dude. So, yeah, man. So, just busy making that 90 days. Um, then, you know what it is, dude? It's just a culture. We have to produce a culture. And sometimes... It's also this, right? People have been fooled over the years. Everyone has been fooled. Take this, take that. Like, and nothing works, right? You saw that really, uh, we had this very uh, heated discussion in the testosterone transformation group with like all these people about, you know, mm-hmm. all the, man, it was, it was, I was like, dude, I feel sad for you. Like, were you talking out of your ass? But whatever. Uh, but, you know, we do our best, dude. We do our best. We can't do anything more, but. Anyway, yeah, dude. So let's get started with um, how your journey has been, how you have felt, and what are the takeaways and learning experiences that everyone can benefit from. Yeah. So, um, and what a lot of people won't realize is my journey started long before, you know, coming across your stuff. Um. It's, you know, it's been an ever changing thing, but when I found your programs and I had started buying into the, the first, uh, the thing that everyone Afro D gets free now, that whole outline of everything to eat, exercises to do proper form, you know, all of that. When I got into that, that was just exponential growth from there. Cause I'm like, this is everything I needed. This is everything that I could want. <laughs> you know, there's so much value there. I loved your your content with D Lip, uh, you know, going through all that, and uh, yeah. So so it started from there. Like th- that was pretty much my beginning of Doc, and uh, getting through all that. And then we did the ninety day uh, or ninety yeah ninety day transformation, and through that, uh, and I'd known this before. I'd taken my test, found out my free testosterone was just ridiculously low. 
And uh, so I was already gung ho for that because I knew that I had some behavioral things I needed to overcome. And through doing a lot of those challenges and even, you know, seeing the challenges other people in the 90 day transformation got, I was just like blown away. I'm like, I don't know if I can do that. So I challenged myself to do that, you know, to kind of corroborate with the other people in the group and, uh, you know, building relationships with everyone in there. Uh, like we're close motherfuckers. The ones that, uh, that, you know, consistently came and, uh, didn't give up. So, um, going through that, of course, doubling my testosterone, which my, my total wasn't even bad, you know, 536. I was actually accepting, accepting of that. And then I'm like, you know, let's deal with this, this thing that's reducing free testosterone. And then lo and behold, you know, and I take, I take the time, you know, six months is a good gauge of consistent behavior. And I think there's these people that get tested every month or every couple of weeks. And it's like, dude, come on. Like not even your diet is going to show up on your blood test every two weeks. So, you know, if at the minimum a month, do a month of Afro-D consistently and then get your blood tests redone and, you know, try and keep everything as the same as you can. But, um, but yeah, I doubled it in six months of Afro D and, uh, I'm still working on everything as you know, that, uh, my lower chain of my whole body is just almost fucked up. Like there's people that are a lot worse than me. <laughs> um, so one, one fun fact, um, I had actually kind of reversed this on my own, um, through like watching Athlean X, his YouTube videos are really great. He's great. <clears throat> But I had super bad pelvic anterior tilt. And for you guys that are watching, you may have it or you may not know. And it's because of this motherfucking thing I'm sitting in right now. But uh, above all, like my hips, I'll show you guys right now. So that was pretty much how I stood. Wow. And the... The reason how I found this out uh, to correct it is actually, uh, yeah, I was looking like fucking Donald Trump. That's how Donald Trump stands for you people. But anyways, I found this out because I was looking in the mirror, you know, trying to get shredded. I'm like, where are my abs? And I'm like, why are my abs so separated and just stretched out? And I'm like, oh, fuck. Well, it's because my whole lower back is being rounded, pelvic anterior tilt. So I had fixed that is because it was really bad before, but I still have a lot of imbalances on the, my lower body. But at the same time, it's something that I've been working on and my legs are strong. Um, I have, when I was actually looking at the deadlifting form that I had sent just recently in the group where Sumer and you helped Simon as well, I think my right leg is a little bit longer than my left and it could be antagonizing some shit, but even then that's no excuse for the, the lack of strength. And I've done the, the ankle things that Sumer actually uh, gave me a routine on and I do that at least once a week. So, you know, I'm working on that. That's one of my biggest things that I've been working on and uh, meditation uh, I know I've, I've taken that challenge. I'm like 16 days in and I'm to the point where like sleep is my number one right now, but there's something so peaceful and satisfying and just reinvigorating at getting up at like four o'clock. And especially for me, it's being outside, like, cause I can just sit out on my roof and it's like literally like not even the birds are chirping, but as soon as five o'clock hits, then the birds are up and it's like, that's fucking crazy. <laughs> but it's like, you know, you have your own little time with the world. So I'd, I get the value out of it, but my sleep has been utter shit. So I've put that on the back burner, but, but yeah, man, um, through, through this testosterone thing and, you know, doubling it, especially, you know, the, the free testosterone is where it matters. 
I cannot say enough because I did a lot of bulking because, you know, we thought intermittent fasting and fasting may have been one of the indicators of my SHBG. I don't think so. So now that I've started doing like one meal a day again, and especially the one meal a day of carnivore, which we'll talk soon. But since I've been doing that, it's been just like butter to get rid of this fat again. And I've like shredded down so super quick. And I think a lot of it is because of the higher testosterone, like maintaining the muscle mass, easily just burning fat. And I've been super satisfied. It's like, it's like, holy shit. Like if anything, because honestly, I'll, I'll, I'll be honest with y'all. I think the testosterone thing, a lot of people look at it is just libido. And for a lot of people, that's a big thing for me. That's like, eh, whatever. I mean, I got work to do, you know, so if, if I don't have to fucking whack off because I'm, you know, super horny all the time, then that's fine with me. But, um, but yeah, if anything else, the body composition thing is a huge thing. And just seeing them, the fat melt off, it was just super satisfying. I'm like, you know, I've been spinning my wheels trying to fast for a fucking week, <laughs> try and burn some fat off. It's like, well, if I would have taken my testosterone a little bit more seriously, taken Afro D or vitamin D, all the, all the good shit, then it'd be much easier. Talk a little bit about that seven day fast because we see that Elliot Hulse has also jumped on the fasting bandwagon. <laughs> it's, yeah. it's hilarious, man. It's like, you know what? I've seen this because I've seen this in myself too. You'll, 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 you'll experience something and it's remarkable. And then you're going to tie everything that happens to that thing. <laughs> and, and I'm not saying that's wrong or, or, or that there's not evidence for that, but it's so interesting how human behavior is, right? So Elliot went on his 10 day fast and now every video he makes, he's like, oh, it's because of fasting, like <laughs> spirituality. You want to get spirituality, you have to fast. You have to, you, have, you want to get to this state in life, you got to fast. I mean, and he's not wrong. It's just how, it's interesting that it's, um, it's like climbing, you know, you have to be ready for certain events in your life. And recently, you were ready for your seven-day fast, which I chickened out on after the fifth day. Uh, it happens. It happens. Apologies. It happens. Apologies. But I had to make that video, man. <laughs> it always <laughs> happens. Like, I sit there, and the camera turns on, and I'm like, fuck, I don't have the words. I don't know what the hell to say. And then I'm like, I got to eat. <laughs> then I eat, and everything is good. But you actually did the seven days, man. Talk about that. Tell us. Yeah. Um, so it was crazy. It, it was kind of the spark, I would say, to losing all this fat after uh, because I did put on a good amount of fat over the winter, which I had expected and kind of planned on. But going through it, it really seems like a blur. Like it almost was like two days were just gone. Uh, and it seemed more like a five day fast. I'm like, holy shit, it's really day seven. Uh, that's that's great. And uh, I was still working out actually about every day, like five of those seven days working out. I decrease just the volume, the amount of sets. Like I'd cut a set maybe by one or two uh, just to be safe more than anything. But uh, yeah, it was nothing too different. The, the hunger pangs were definitely there because I had not fasted in a long time. And uh the the habits were definitely there too because i'd get to work and you you just it's funny how quickly like things can go back to the the homeostasis or whatever you're used to and how hard it is to change and push through these like speed bumps to to roll down the back end but uh but yeah it was really just the ultimate challenge to break my habits that i had developed before you know for better or worse it, you know it's it's just that mental power and focus and determination but it yeah it was amazing that that's how that's fasting to me i, I mean it's it's the most powerful thing that is so simple that if people followed the world would probably be much healthier but awesome awesome and and 
you know, you, you, you discussed this thing about body composition being something very important. And I, I totally get it. I agree. Um, are there, is, have you noticed significantly any other behavior in your life when it comes to work or leadership or relationships or anything that is something um, important for you that you noticed since testosterone increase? Oh, yeah. Um, so this is one that my girlfriends noticed as well. And it's the fact that I don't take shit from people in public anymore. Yes. Uh, yeah, <laughs> like it actually scares her sometimes. There is, there is this fucking bitch. Let me tell you, <laughs> this was three weeks ago. We were at one of my favorite restaurants, and she, first of all, she was like standing way too close to me, and it's like, I'm standing here. I'm not gonna move, but you're fucking in my bubble right now. And she was freaking out more than me. But beyond that. She was just being so demanding and disrespectful to the people across the counter. She was like asking to sample everything as we went down the assembly line, essentially. And at a point, like I was back talking like under my breath and then it, I just snapped and I'm like, come on, what the fuck is going on here? You can't live your life demanding and treating people so shitty. And it wasn't even me that she was treating shitty. So I I eventually went over and I turned around and I said, yeah, after you pay for it. She's like, can I taste it? I'm like, yeah, after you pay for it. And and then the people over the counter were actually trying to like tell me, you know, hey, (laughs) because they didn't want to cause a scene. But, you know, it's just even that was kind of a little thing. It my my girlfriend was freaked out, but I was just like, come on, like this that's a human being across the counter. Stop being a fucking cunt. So, but, but yeah, that would, that would be one of the, the most uh, changes as well. And I would also contribute this to uh, the 90 day transformation, walking up to dudes, hitting on them as if I was fully gay. You know, you just, you kind of see the world as a playground at that point. And it's like, this doesn't even fucking matter. It's like, this, like, look at the galaxies right now. This does not fucking matter. So why am I stressing over this shit? You know, <laughs> you know, think <laughs> bigger, but stand up for yourself at the same time. Oh man, so good. So um, <clears throat> I haven't told anyone this uh, because I try to I keep things to myself sometimes because it's it's a you know it's cool. But I'll 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 share this because it because you said it and. I feel a little generous. There is a way that you can, in an instant, snap into getting rid of any anxiety you have in a social uh, stratosphere. And that is when you can establish a frame of, I wonder what will happen. And more specifically, I wonder if this person can handle it. The reason this works, I mean, it works for me. I don't know if it's going to work for everyone, but it's just a a thing. The reason this works for me is because it takes the game into, first of all, an experiment but it's also takes me out of the game. So it's not like, let's see how I feel when I do this. It's let's see how this person reacts as I do this. Let's see how smart this person is socially. Let's test this person's social caliber right? So it's like, like, let's say you want to approach a girl, right? And it's like, it's kind of weird. Like it's a restaurant, right? Or she's on a fucking date or like, you know, it's like husband, wife, I don't know, whatever weird ass situation. If you can establish the frame of let's test her, let's, let's do a little test on her. Let's give her the pleasure of knowing how good she is in this type of environment. Let's see how much fear she has. You completely take the environment and yourself out of the picture and all the pressure is on her. Right. And that for me, that when I take myself out, my fear is also out. 
because I don't, I don't exist now. The only thing that exists is my curiosity. So it's the feature of me. Dude, I don't know if you watch basketball, but I've been watching Kawhi Leonard's interviews. Kawhi Leonard's the best player in the world right now. And, you know, Toronto just beat the Warriors in game one of the finals. Game one is today or, you know, tonight. Uh, for you, well, you guys are seven hours ahead or, or behind me. But uh, anyway, it's going to happen soon. And Kawhi Leonard is very calm. Dude, the guy like never has emotion on his face. He's like rational male, you know, the epitome of the rational male. He'll, he'll hit a game winner and then he, he'll like be happy and shit. But in, during the game, he'll do some crazy moves, some crazy defense, no emotion. So they asked him in the interview, how can you never have any emotion? Like you robot or what? So he says, look, I want to win. This is about a goal and the goal is winning. So if I have emotions and I let my emotions get in the way, then I lose track of what the actual thing is I'm doing. So he took himself out of the game. Why? Because he's focused on the winning. It's something beyond himself. And that's what you just said, the galaxies, right? So if you think, if your frame is, hey, I wonder how the galaxies will change if I do this. I mean, they could somehow you know, the butterfly effect and all that crap. But anyway, let's see how the galaxies change or let's see if I can win this way or let's see how she responds or let's see how crazy the restaurant becomes or let's see if I can get kicked out of this mall. <laughs> Curiosity. I think there's something there for framing and... Um, Wow, dude, that's so awesome. It reminds me of my brother. Because when my brother is at a restaurant and some, somebody fucks with him, I learned this from him. Uh, dude, he goes epic ape shit. Like he will cause a scene. <laughs> and he's not doing an experiment. He feels that. Like he, he's pissed. Um, yeah, it's, it's fucked up, dude. It's cool. I like it. I like it. I like it. Yeah, that's interesting about the basketball thing. <clears throat> yeah. Like, you know, not tying feelings to the performance or even the crowd's reactions. And as you were saying that, what came to my mind was that whole thing where, you know, tr trying to transcend your ego. And, you know, I think ego and emotion could possibly be in the same boat. And when you silence emotion in a way and just are super focused, then you could possibly be on the path of overcoming ego in that way, at least for a small glimpse, you know? So that's interesting. Mm. What do you mean becoming ego? Explain that a little no, bit. No, overcoming. Overcoming. Okay, okay, okay. Got it, got it, got it. That yep. makes sense. That I, that I understand. Wow. Hey, man, we, I, I want to, uh, we're talking about um, testosterone and stuff. One one thing that some guys, maybe not the guys who follow our content, but other guys, they, they see testosterone as a purely non-mental thing. A lot of people, right? They don't understand. Like, it's like they think the challenges are a joke or something. It's like they don't, dude, like I spent years coming up with that shit. Like you, you guys don't understand what soul I gave to the 90 day transformation. Like it, it, it and that's why I did it. This is the last one on one. Because I told Imran, man, like I can't do this. Like what the fuck? You know, it, it's enough, man. Let, let's solve each Academy's members issues individually. Do the 90 day sequence. Get them to help each other. Because like, like man, how can we survive like this doing one on ones forever? Right. And the 90 day transformation, it was every week with all of you guys. I mean, dude, don't get me wrong. I fucking love that stuff. Like I love it to death, but man, it's not sustainable. <laughs> it's just not. Um, and now we have 210. I mean, imagine when we have 2000, what the hell, what, what am I going to do? Right. But anyway, tell me, because I know that you believe in this because you've brought it up in, in the comments that you've made to people. How important are the challenges for you? Oh, so 
this and this is something I bring up to everyone, especially in the testosterone transformation. I'm like, these are the this is literally the foundation and fundamental to actually changing uh, because you're changing the way you fucking think, which changes everything else. Like you're changing some like a little scratch on the lens. You're buffing it out and polishing it with these challenges and that affects everything else and you can see everything else clearer and it's beyond physiology because I mean, even, even then you're, your fucking brain, if you're changing your brain, then your hypothalamus will still get the feedback and tell your balls and dick to be, hey, fucking start working because, you know, <laughs> it's the same, it's the same organ. So you want to, you want to change your brain at the same time. But I feel like there are some mental blocks that a lot of people get. And it's from, you know, just growing up, like no one grows up and lives a perfect life, which is great because we can overcome those but through not doing the challenges you're just fucking yourself over it's that's that's what i tell everyone else like i hung out with my friends earlier and i told my friend james i'm like you know the challenges are the main thing and i know you did a couple of them in the academy when you were here but you know if you got the time you you just gotta do it and that's that's a minimum as well. I mean, if you can't take Afro D every day, then you're fucking yourself over there. If you can't do the challenges at the same time, and it's all synergy. It's it's the synergistic effect uh, the challenges offer in conjunction with that. Because there's there's a thing, kind of just like like if you wanted to lose body fat, like sure, if you wanted to be against cardio in every single way, that's fine. Uh, you could fast and do a cal- calorie deficit if you wanted, and that could be your two things. But you need to throw everything you fucking got at your goal to accomplish it. And if that involves doing some cardio, so fucking be it. Do you care about this little alterna- alter- alternative thing that you don't believe in? Or do you want to fucking accomplish your goal? And that's that's the game changer at the end of the day is people that do not do everything that can be done every day or at least most days got realistic and i also want to get your perspective on this concept of balance because i've learned and i'm still learning because this is really hard this is one of the hardest things for me i am naturally again i might just believe this and i'm bullshitting myself but i am naturally an extreme person so when i do something i kind of forget about everything else because it's my personality. However, I'm beginning to somehow get into this massaged lifestyle of balance where, because now I've realized that waking up early is something that I am natural at. Like it, it's my, my body loves waking up early. I know that now, right? And, and it's just like my body just wakes up early. Even if I don't want it to, it just does. So it, like, let's listen to the body. So that's one thing. So I know that having a nightlife Vegas style thing, which my friends always try to get me to come out at night all the time. And I just say no, because now I am going to listen to my body more than my friends. Duh. The other thing is this concept of what you should spend your time on, right? So you could spend, you can have a mindset where, you know what, I'm going to do the gym seven times a week. And sometimes I'm going to go twice a day, or you can have the mindset of, you know what, uh, I'm too busy making money. So I'm not going to go to the gym. Why? Because money is more important. And when I have a lot of money, then I can hire a personal instructor and a personal trainer, and then it'll save my, you know, 10 X my results. Bullshit. But you know, people believe that. Okay. And then there's this concept of, of no, I don't need to work out or make money. Um, I'm just going to go out and, and, and approach a lot of girls and, and have sex with them. Right. That's the pickup RSD type a lot of people believe that. And there's a lot of pickup guys here too, believe it or not, even Kiev. It's fucking crazy. Oh my God. I hate, I hate them. <laughs> um, but we'll talk about that uh, later in, in the video if you want. But, but, but I'm beginning to realize you got to do it all every day, every single day. Entropy, right? Entropy is this concept of your body degenerating every single second. So you got to work out regularly, whatever that means to you regularly, doesn't mean three hours a day necessarily, but it could, it could eating healthy, cooking your food, or if you eat out, you eat healthy, 
whatever that means for you and, and stay with the basics, you know, don't eat processed food, don't eat junk, like just follow the basic stuff, at least the Afro D every day, the challenges, fine. And sleep early, wake up early. Like the balance of life, I believe is the hardest thing to do consistently. And hence it's probably the most beneficial. What do you think yeah. about that, man? It's so hard for me. <laughs> yeah, definitely. I mean, I would agree with everything you said. And as you were saying it, I had pictured uh, when I used to follow Ty Lopez on Snapchat, you know, you see his whole day and he's paying all these people like millions, I'm sure. But like his day was like the perfect day every day. Like that's what he's going for. Like he starts his day off intellectually reading for whatever, two, three hours, uh, hit the gym, dancing, go out, have a nightlife and watch some movies with friends, uh, amazing food by nutritionists, chefs. Uh, like that's the life. I mean, <laughs> if you can set that for yourself and I think a lot of people can, if you try hard enough. Uh, and for me, I, I like being on my own, like my, my thing, like gym is my meditation almost in a way. So if I can just zone out, vibe with my music, then that's how it is. And I'd rather, rather than a personal trainer telling me, oh, you need to do that shit. But at the same time, that's balance for me. I need to schedule someone in to help me to, to balance everything out and sharpen the saw as they say, you know, but yeah, the, it's, I think a lot of people just doubt themselves in how much they can actually achieve to achieve something closer to balance. And that's the main point is people just may not try for it or don't know how easy it could be. Okay. Good, good, good point. Okay. Good point. I'm definitely trying, man. Speaking of, uh, speaking of balance and having a balanced diet, let's talk about only <laughs> eating meat. <laughs> Yeah. Let's balance that out. So uh, tell us about the carnivore diet. What are your experiences with it? What have you read about it? What do you know about it? And what have you heard about it? Yeah, I mean, I've seen the Joe Rogan thing. Uh, and I've, I've watched a few other ones. Uh, Seamland makes some videos about it. And he interviewed the main guy. I listened to Ben Greenfield podcast about it. So I've seen most everything that most everyone else has probably seen if they've followed the subject. And I just decided to give it a try because I was actually ordering butcher box uh, every month, grass fed, grass finished beef. That's, that's what I get. I don't get the chicken or all that shit, but I get beef every day. And I'm like, you know, this would be so easy because I'm already eating this meat pretty much every day. I just won't cook the rice, won't cook the asparagus, you know, all that extra stuff. And some of my experiences through that is, well, incorporating organ meats. So this is the number one. And this is where vegan gains is fucking retarded. Any vegan that is trying to discount organ meats, they just do not know. And a lot of them avoid it, to be honest. They'll say, oh yeah, Jordan Peterson's just eating muscle meat and he's skipping his vegetables. And it's like, fuck no. We don't, we don't understand organ meats here in the U.S., and the fact that they're two, three dollars for organic, that I, I just bought some chicken heart or chicken livers at Whole Foods for three bucks, that'll last me a whole week. Wow. And, you know, I, I cook about 65 grams of it uh, a day, and I try and incorporate it every day, and I cycle. So I'm not straight on carnivore diet. That's, that's a thing that I want out there, is I'm cycling it. So three days out of the week is straight carnivore, like salt is my only seasoning straight carnivore. Um, you cook how much? That, like how much do you some, cook it? Um, uh, like temperature or what do you mean? Yeah, like what so is it like medium did, rare, medium? Yeah, the, um, I had overcooked it early on when I had done some organ meats, so I've lightened up a bit because one thing that I've found out is the conventional that you may buy just tastes like utter bullshit and i'd shown this on a live it like it was so weird because it's like no wonder i don't like it so then yes. i went to whole foods and bought some organic chicken hearts or chicken livers rather and i'm like that weird taste is gone 
And it's like, wow. it's not just because I'm cooking it surrounded in bacon or, you know, it's all, it, it literally just tastes not as offensive. It's just the texture that my body has not been used to growing up. Got it. So I throw it in the air fryer, cook it with some steak or some uh, ground beef, whichever grass fed ground beef, all that stuff. And I, I just down it. I feel amazing. It's, it's really, it's like, it's almost the sen- same sensation as kombucha, like where my gut is happy. It's like, just, you know, there's like, we're eating some substance now, you know, it's like, this is serotonin release. That's great. So three days, chicken liver, grass fed beef, grass finished beef, which is usually like steak and ground beef. Three days. I mean, yeah, I'm eating about like 1800 calories worth of meat and I've I've done a whole roast, like a grass fed roast. My biggest meal, it was a, yeah, it was just that straight. I didn't do organ meats that day, but I know you're cycling, but was there ever, or is there now a sense of fear? Because we, you know, we read, we have all this knowledge and it's like, damn, man, I'm not getting, I didn't get my broccoli today. I didn't get it. You know, I didn't get yeah. my X or Y today. Yeah, yes, totally. <laughs> that's, that's, that's been what I've been used to, especially like during prep. I'm like, okay, where's the greens on my plate? What the fuck is happening? And I'll show people my food and they're like, what, where the fuck are the vegetables? And it's like, uh, yeah, no vegetables, but you see this organ meat, that's uh, some potent bioavailable shit that your body doesn't even have to convert really. So you don't need it if you can choke that down. Have you tried hearts and kidneys and brains? Because dude, like cow brains is one of my favorite foods, man. It's it's like an Indian delicacy. And when you go to an Indian restaurant, they always have it. It's called brain masala or beja masala. Beja is the word for brain. And me and my grandmother actually share the plate because the rest of my family thinks it's disgusting. Anyway, me and my grandma, dude, we're just finger licking that shit. It, there's so much fat in there. It's just obviously, no, it's a brain. So it's full of fat and it tastes so good. So good. The, 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 the spices they put on it are just amazing. Um, have you tried any other organs, just liver? And I've done liver, heart, and that's about it. Got it. Okay. But I would totally try that. And I, now thinking about it, Indian food would be the perfect accompaniment I mean, it technically wouldn't be carnivore, but if we're looking at health, because that, that's what I do, I cycle it, so I'll still have some carbs for testosterone, you know, but. Right. What about um, uh, marrow, bone marrow? No, I haven't. I'd, I'd done a, a rotisserie chicken recently, and I kind of tried, same with like the little ligaments and everything, just to pick as much as I could, see if right. I could get some marrow out of the bones. But no, nothing huge. Got it. Uh, see, for like, us, we grew up with this stuff. So like my mom would make uh, uh, kaleji, which is which could liver, uh, uh, gurda, which is kidney, beja, which is brain. And then uh, what would happen is in Pakistan, when they make like a biryani, you saw this chicken and then the trick would be this happened at every dinner that we had biryani or some kind of big rice meal. I would, or my mom usually would look for the hearts, the little chicken hearts that were left over. And I would be the one to get it because it was my favorite, like that heart, the little bitty chicken. So good. So good. So they, so they would like search for it and give it to me. And, um, is it easy to find this? Because I know downstairs here, here at the co-working space in the basement, there's a market and they always have liver, always chicken liver, always. And I get it. I get two portions usually. And uh, I wouldn't say it's like, I, cause they don't spice it. Right. It's like bland type food sometimes. Um, but yeah, people don't really eat organ meats, man. You're right. Nobody really does. Hmm. Yeah, okay. It's, it's more limited at Whole Foods too. And I should bitch to Jameson about this because it's his job. But, but yeah, Whole Foods, like they only have chicken livers now. Uh, whereas they used to have chicken hearts, I believe. They used to have some beef liver, which is, you know, the pinnacle as far as I know. But it's very limited here in the U.S. It's, it's, people just don't buy it. 
Yeah. For those of you who don't know Jameson, he is the uh, founder and CEO of Whole Foods, and he's also a member of the Academy. <laughs> so you can hit him up and bitch at him when you join. <laughs> um, yeah, man. Okay. Now, one thing interesting about carnivore diet is um, people have been posting on the Academy recently. One of the guys from this, I don't know. Do you know what the snake diet is? What is that? Yeah, it's it's pretty much like fasting, like extended fast sometimes, but they have a focus of replenishing your electrolytes, which, you know, that's the main thing when you're fasting. So I see, I see, I see. So it's not, it has nothing to do with carnivore. Uh, no, not really. Okay. Okay. Got it. Got it. It's, it's just a formulation, like a method. Okay. Um, a few of my friends here in Kiev, they do carnivore diet, strictly raw, just raw. So they wow. just get the steak from the store and they just eat the steak and they make sure it's good quality because these guys used to eat really bad quality and it fucked them up, you know, with the foul smell and all that. But now they know where to get the meat, good meat. They get it. I don't know if it's like grass fed. I'll have to look in more into that, but that's all they've been eating. And I was also told by one of my friends that Genghis Khan and those guys drank a lot of raw milk. <laughs> like a lot, like a nut amount, crazy amounts of raw milk, because that's what they had, right? Readily available during wars, right? To just get the milk and drink it. So that's also an interesting point. Um, when it, dude, diet is such an interesting topic. Man. When I when I was watching Jordan Peterson, he's like, I only eat meat. First thing I was like, does he only eat meat, or they paid him to say that? Because <laughs> goddamn, the way he said it, like I believe him. Um, but then the carnivore diet came in and this doctor came on Joe Rogan and he's been doing it for two years, only meat. And I'm like, someone pay him to say that? Like, you know, cause you always question this, these people who just say like, this is the way it's extreme. Um, but you got to try it. You got to try it. Right, man. Got to try it. I'll tell you like my diet, I don't do anything raw. Um, I mean, no, no raw meat for sure. I mean, vegetables obviously, but no raw meat. I would say it's like calories wise, probably around 70% meat right now, 65, 70% ish total week yeah. to week. Um, and the reason I decided that is because I have never in my life, not never actually ate a quote unquote high protein diet. I didn't really care about it so much because, you know, the, 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 the theory, you know, the, the, all the, the research says, you know, 40, 50 grams, you're good. It's so maybe athlete. Okay. 80 grams. You're good. Not 200 grams. However, I think that I will do this high meat content. So high protein as well, because it's lean for some time. I'll give it a, a few months and let's see what happens. I'm definitely noticing um, strength and that's for sure. And I'm also noticing that I, I feel stronger. Like I feel bigger, quote unquote. Um, yeah. So I don't know hmm. what's going to happen, but let's see. Let's thing, see. Yeah. Yeah. One thing I'd recommend and I've heard and I tend to agree with this uh, just because of my experience through fasting. Um, if you eat too much protein, like constantly, you know, seven days a week, uh, 30 days a month, whatever you, your body's not, it's going to be used to it. You know, the, the whole homeostasis thing It's like, Oh, we're going to expect it because it's the norm now. And uh, what I had heard, if you take a day off of eating meat or high protein, then your body will, be more sensitive to it and more receptive to it. So once again, it's like cycle and balance. So some right. people go just fast the whole day, you know, and I'm like, yeah, that fucking makes sense because that's got good. it, you know, and you don't feel bad on your fasting days for not having protein. It's like, Hey, no, not at all. Wow. Okay. Yeah. That's, that's very good. You know what? The cycling thing is if, if you, if someone asked me Farhan, what is the one, conclusion you've come to when it comes to diet eat everything <laughs> like that's literally my consensus to for myself i just eat everything 
I mean, obviously not everything, unless it's like cheat day, okay, fine, go out, go all out. But like, don't not eat something. Oh, I'm not going to ever eat eggs. Nah, dude, like who the fuck knows? Who the fuck knows? Don't, don't ever eat meat. I mean, dude, who, who the fuck knows? Right? Like my friend who's doing all carnivore now for 11 months, he was vegan slash vegetarian for three years, really fucked him up depressed anxiety he had ibs you know the irritable bowel syndrome he had uh, leaky gut just like bad wow. carnivore diet all gone all of it gone gone so it's not just jordan peterson getting rid of depression and not only his daughter but like damn dude and it's interesting like is there anything that is not in liver or like organ meats slash lean meats you know beef is there any nutrient that you can think of not in there? Because even vitamin D, dude, liver has a lot. Yeah, well, I mean, vitamin C is one that surprises a lot of people, even, you know, just muscle meat. It's, they're like, there's vitamin C in there? Yeah. Like, well, I guess, apparently. <laughs> yeah, yeah, but yeah. Because yeah. yeah. everything is there. It's interesting. Everything you need is in meat. <laughs> Who would have known? You don't really, you don't really need asparagus. Maybe you don't maybe really need spinach and kale. I mean, you can I use them know. as tools, but yeah, yeah it's I don't know. like a lot of people go with the conditional or like a conditional omnivore. That's right. Right. And it's funny in the book, a rational male, he refers to, uh, uh, people who are like emasculated, like the, 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 the betas as herb. So it was. <laughs> <laughs> Wait, nope. as what? Herb. It's the word herb. herb. E H E R B. It's hilarious. It's like how you refer to someone who's like, I don't know if it's like gay, but like, you know, someone who's kind of like really beta and like feminized. They call yeah. it herb. And dude, here, because it's like Russian culture. Um, one time I was talking to this girl about veganism, and uh, she kind of like made it synonymous with being gay. Like, sort of like that. It was kind of weird. <laughs> she's like, oh, oh, so like your friend was vegan. So like, so he's like, is he gay? <laughs> <laughs> oh, fuck. Dude, girl, you are way behind on the, on the evolution, <laughs> like the evolution of knowledge. Like you guys are way behind. Like, Jesus well, Christ. I, Jesus I don't know. Christ. I mean, there may be credence to that. Who knows? Because there, there is that soy boy phenomenon. And that's yes. the word that's more used nowadays really sad but it's a thing you yeah see it in people uh, speaking sure. of, speaking of soy boy my uh my buddy thomas uh, by the way dude people here know me from youtube it's hilarious they call me doc and shit like even Keith, wow. man dude two days ago i was downstairs chilling in the in the base it's not the base the first floor like out outdoors like getting sun um and i'm just just standing there and this dude Hey, Farhan. I'm like, damn, dude, you know who he was? You probably, I don't know if you saw this. It's this Indian guy, Deepak, who I collaborated with when I was in Miami. And I made a video for him. He made a video for me on his channel. He's like a pickup guy, right? Uh -huh. Like he's a pickup dude and he does boot camps. So he's doing a boot camp in Kiev. And for whatever reason, I was downstairs that day. I never like hang out and get the sun standing there and relaxing. That day I did it. And that day he was getting his jeans fixed with the tailor at, at the build, in the building. How fucking crazy, dude. And he saw me. And then like we talked for like an hour about all this shit. And uh, dude, this is weird. Weird universe, man. Yeah. Like not funny, like scary, scary, but cool. Like, man, but yeah, dude. Um, what else do we want to talk about? Um, what are you interested in talking about? Well, let's talk about one last thing before we end. Oh, I feel, I feel oh. there's, there's something, one other thing we can talk about. We did, we covered testosterone. We covered carnivore. Is there something that you're wondering something anything you know no not specifically that's coming to mind uh you know my mind was kind of in in la la land elsewhere as you were explaining uh, i can't think of much else okay so let, let me ask you a final question okay um from and and be very very honest 
Okay, be very honest about this. I mean, you're going to be honest, but I still want to say it. From what you've seen, the evolution of Farhan, let's say, right, me, and you know me well from you know, five, four or five years, however long it's been, where would you like to see me go next? Not physically or in the world, none of that, but mentally, physiologically, spiritually, is there something that you see me as that you maybe haven't? Or is there something that I can do? Like I, I'm asking you, and ad, you know, for advice essentially, because I trust your advice. So what, what would you like to see in me or how can I improve man? You know, the main thing I would say is I'm, I'm very satisfied like with how you are now. And there's a, you know, you've come a long way. You've, there were some times where you were battling with ego and all that. But what I do miss about those days is you were more, you were definitely confronting of people. But I think now in the state of mind that you're at and, you know, not being that way, like just being super abrasive on people is I think now I want to see you collaborate with other people like in the YouTube space you know like I want to see you on Joe Rogan someday I want to see you talking to uh you know like Mike Mike Mutzel on a on his high intensity health and stuff he's done a lot of the same interviews that you have as well with Mr. Fung and everything um I just want to see more of you exposed to other people so then we can get like cross collaboration and all that because i think that's probably the next step awesome great now going deeper into that question do you see do you want to limit that to not perhaps limit but specifically youtube or perhaps experts quote unquote that i can access who others can't yeah, I mean, if that's your edge, then that's your edge and go for it. Um, I think more in the realm that I'm uh, talking of and collaborating with others, it's not so much cutting edge knowledge. It's more just being like, hey, I'm in this space too. And I know gotcha. a fucking lot of shit. So, <laughs> you know. Gotcha. Gotcha. You know, like your Thomas DeLowers, your, uh, you know, not Keno Body. He doesn't know shit. Um <laughs> <laughs> uh, you know, even your Elliot Hulses nowadays, like your Elliot Hulse that is now enlightened and mm. you can talk over the, the rational male because he still loves to talk about that and understood. So Got that would it. be interesting. So here is my, uh, here is my uh, take with that. I have reached just right now in my life, I've reached a sort of, level, I'm not saying higher or lower, just a level where I have to conquer some dragons, slay some dragons individually without help and without disturbance and without any contamination into me. So, you know, when you talked about the ego thing I used to be, and I get it. I know exactly what you mean. The battle that I fight, the biggest battle that I fight in terms of dragons is an incongruence with what my upbringing taught me to become versus what I have become. It's a huge cognitive dissonance, huge. So right now, the dragon conquering is to combine these two into congruence. And if I do the collaborations, I go backwards. I go backwards. Why? Because I will be conveying something that I don't know yet. Dude, getting away from America and getting away from that environment, starting, you know, you know, I, I start new environments sometimes in life. Like when I went to Colombia a couple of years ago, now I'm in Ukraine. 
one of the main reasons is to give my brain a reset where I can forget about everything. Like start over in an identity so I can recreate who I am. And speaking a brand new language helps. It's hard, but it helps. Being in a crazy culture where I'm very out of my comfort zone. Very. I have no idea what my status is here. Zero idea. I mean, if people recognize me from YouTube, okay, it's cool. <laughs> but like, that's also like, uh, like my brain doesn't get it. It doesn't understand because I can't speak the language properly yet. Um, so I have to establish the congruence first, slay that dragon first, and do it. Once I do that, oh, we are at a new level. The academy is at a new level. The world is at a new level. Because then I am ready. Bring it on. Bring on Rogan. I'm ready. Right now, I'm in that slaying the dragon fight. And I'm not saying this is the only dragon. No, no. There's going to be another one and another one, another one. Let's get, I'm ready. I'm ready for all the belly of the beast, all of them. But the one I'm working on right now is very personal and very important. So, and dude, even today I was at the Dnipro River. I went to this place, Obolon. I'll post it in the Academy. And you know, I, have, I haven't done Instagram stories in like six months or something. Like I don't go on Instagram or any of that. Just, I just focus on the Academy and the Testosterone Transformation Group. And um, I was like, dude, I'm in Obolon. Dude, I, I opened up my Instagram <laughs> and I press record story. I recorded a video and I'm like, no, I can't do it. Delete. I didn't do it. Because it was, it's almost like a test because when I put myself out there to a cold audience, like a random audience, Academy is different, right? It's very, very different to me. In my brain, Academy is just family. Everyone else, cocksucker, right? So, so it's like, so then I, I saved that video and I, I'm going to post it on the Academy tonight. So, so you guys at least get it. But I just can't do that yet because I have to work on my shit. Some personal shit. Yeah. That's why, man. But dude, I agree. It's going to happen. It's going to happen. But I got to fight right now. Got to fight. Gotta, I'm preparing for the fight, man. No. Hit it with all you got. <laughs> That's it, dude. That's it. Thank you. And, and honestly, dude, like, you know, uh, sometimes I, I write these insecurity type messages that I, that you read and then you call me out on them. I really thank you for that, man. Cause I do need people to call me out too. And most people are just, yes, man. They just agree with me. Uh, but then like, you know, like guys like you guys like Imran, you know, they really like, no, nah, dude, shut the fuck up. Like even Imran, dude, he used to be such a nice guy, like saying yes to shit. And then I like really cussed him out and like, really like, you know, made him like fucking crazy. And then, and then we did all the business training and all this crazy with like the top people in the world. We really trained with them. And, and so, you know, doing that professional training, especially for Imran now, dude, when he goes all berserk on me and just like really, really insults me, I feel so good. I'm like, Oh, Imran, sexy, sexy. I like it. So thank you too, man. Thank you for calling me out and uh, please keep doing it. Of course. Yeah. I mean, definitely being called an asshole, which was one of the things you brought up in the, the 90 days. And then it came up in the rational mail. It's like, if you haven't been called an asshole, then probably a beta motherfucker. <laughs> so. <laughs> <laughs> cha-ching, cha-ching. Asshole is like right. cha-ching, cha-ching. Yep. Awesome, man. Awesome. Uh, thank, so thank you, asshole, for... This, uh, <laughs> this I am what I eat. <laughs> I actually haven't heard that before. I love it. I fucking love it. All right, dude. Um, yeah, you know, eating that asshole. Mm. Um, yeah, it, it is an organ, so it's okay. We can do it. <laughs> yep. The anal organ. <laughs> <laughs> Thanks, dude. Thanks a lot for the for the call, man. And um, I'm gonna stop recording, uh, and and then we'll touch base. I want you for a couple of more minutes. Is that cool? Yeah, for sure. Right. Any any last messages? Give it to them, and then I'll stop. Yeah. So if you're too much of a pussy to take Afro D because you do not like the taste, the 
cure is grapefruit juice. If you down it with grapefruit juice, you won't really taste that shit. It'll melt in very well. So there's your pussy tip. See you guys later. (laughs) The the pussy grape. All right. Thanks, man. Thank you, guys. And uh, this is probably going to be the last one-on-one ever. Oh, so sad. But it is also a celebration. Bye, guys.